G'day once again, and we finally have some patch notes which are hopefully going to alleviate some of the pressures that we've seen on the servers. Although I actually have had a bit of a read through, and it doesn't actually specifically mention the server problems that we've had, but I've been reassured basically by Redbeard on the official server that there are a number of things like the stability stuff that don't actually feature in the patch notes, but they are certainly something that has been taken care of. And so it'll be interesting to see when this one actually drops. Uh, what the reaction is like for the server stability. Hopefully it is good. I know that my own company has been holding off playing for a little while just because we didn't really want to lose our stuff. And so a few of us would log in just to make sure that things like troughs and uh, decay timers were reset, but that was just about it. Anyway, on to the patch notes. So first up with the new content, they've added new regions, which is basically expanding the map from 11 by 11 to 13 by 13. Uh, you would think with changes to the map, there may be a wipe, but not necessarily in this case. Uh, the Eastern waters, Western waters, and the uncharted sea, they're all accessed by portals. And I would assume that they're going to take up that space in the, the new two rows and the two columns that will be added to the 13 by 13 map will actually be these areas which you access via portals. Uh, the only thing that's probably critical for these areas is the eastern and western waters are full plain and the uncharted sea is full lawless um, and in the future the uncharted sea looks like it's going to be a difficult region to live in or uh, maybe it's going to be cold uh, maybe there'll be storms, maybe there'll be something that just makes it a little bit harder, but apparently that's going to be a future thing. But that's what we've got coming, so no wipe as far as I can tell, but we do have new grids which is adding more islands so that there's more space for people to do stuff. The other new addition to the game is the workstation. Now the workstation is a new crafting facility that allows you to change 10,000 of a resource into a block or a bundle. And conversely, you can basically take that blocker bundle and reverse it and take it down into 10,000 of that resource. Uh, the resources basically include flint, stone, and wood. Uh, and the wood here, it looks a little bit odd when you see this. You've got cedar, fir, iron, wood, oak, pine, and poplar. They're all the original names for the wood, um, as opposed to what you see now. Uh, I can't remember which ones relate to which, but um, you know. The, the strong wood, the soft wood, etc, etc, are actually a one-to-one -one relationship with the cedar, fir, and ironwood, etc. Um, you can actually find when you're actually spawning these in via codes that you actually use the cedar and the fir code, but it will give you the in-game resource as like the, the soft wood or the strong wood, for example. Uh, I can't remember the exact correlation, but yeah, they exist already. It's not like they're actually a new type of wood. Lastly, it looks like a couple of simple holiday items have been added into the game where you can get them from vendors at the free ports. Obviously correlating with the current Lunar New Year and Valentine's Day stuff, it looks like you can get some statues and some teddy bears. So all up, I'd actually have to say that that is a, a fairly uh, modest, if actually small, amount of new content. Because having played around with the grid editor, adding those new grids, it would have taken someone a bit of time to put the islands down and configure the actual settings for them, but it wouldn't be a significant job. It's not like they're creating some kind of brand new content. It's just someone sitting down with the editor and making the new regions available for use. The workstation being just a single item where you can basically create a, uh, a block which you can either create or destroy back into the resources. And then, yeah, it looks like seven new items which are just going to be some kind of a statue or a teddy bear so yeah quite a small amount of new content which at this point in time i think is bloody fantastic because when you actually then go on to this next section of bug fixes you'll understand that what they've been working on okay the bug fixes now this is a long list but here we go they have fixed instances of roof tiles would snap to floating points above ceiling structures Transient trackers did not point to the correct location and updated the item description. Cursed armor would not appear correctly on female characters. General tile module were no longer usable. The army of them smithy would delete items. Items were lost when demolishing a container structure. The client crashed when crew members are creating while the game language is set to Turkish. That's a very specific one. Uh, mounted NPC crews were not taking damage. Uh, Grave digger stopped collecting Submarine caused a crash. Army of the Damned would not wake up after being knocked out. Island Selector would not work in free ports. Items were being deleted from the Ritual Pedestal after server restart. Placing a Ritual Pedestal would cause a crash in single player. 
Ritual pedestals would also cause servers to crash. Placing a ritual pedestal would cause the decay of structures around it. Uh, killing an unconscious crew would result in them standing up. Players were being warped out of the B6 Power Stone Cave. Duplicate army of them smithy in the Altar of the Dam Craftables. Uh, items were being deleted from the Altar of the Dam after restart. Have a break there for a bit. Alright, continuing on. Items were being deleted from the Cursed Temple after server restart. Firing at some angles caused crew members to dismount cannons on the turtle ship. Item caches from demolished structures only contained one max player stack. Uh, bottles not containing treasure maps in polar regions. Incorrect messages were being displayed when attempting to claim an island that exceeded the available claim points. Monumental studies structure had no collision. Islands in G10 and C10 had the incorrect biomes. Transient nodes could spawn on an island that does not allow building. Description of the frameworks of the Cursed Totem and Burial Mound did not accurately show construction time. Data deletions while grid traveling in PvE. Market systems behaving incorrectly. Warehouses would duplicate resources on restart. Cursed temples could be built on ships. Monumental studies. Modular room did not allow players to craft anything. Cursed armor was not showing up on female character models. That's a duplicate. Uh, junk sales were, would stop functioning after gridding. Wow. So yes, a very long, big list of fixes. All that seemed to be quite a lot centered around the, the new uh, Army of the Damned theme stuff and the modular studies for the Great Temple. But there was a whole heap of stuff in between there where we actually saw obviously a lot of the crashing and deleting in the market system and the warehouse that was really causing a lot of havoc on the servers lately. Um, and obviously then hopefully we'll see the fixes for players logging in and losing their companies players who would um, grid and then be have their character trashed and they were being told they needed to create a new one so and um, there is something in there basically saying an incorrect message about attempting to a claim exceeding the available claim points um i'm hoping that they've actually fixed the also the claim points being reset uh on a server reset that because um people were basically getting more claim points than they want and i think um there's an issue where when you merge companies you potentially end up with more claim points than you should as well uh doesn't seem to be listed here so probably not in this patch but significantly there's just an absolute ton in there that's actually being done and that's not even to go on with the miscellaneous stuff which we'll go through next all right miscellaneous Potatoes and limes can be stored in the crew silo. Looms inventory is increased to 150. The spider base and scaling stats have been increased. The display length for a name is set to 13 characters. Okay. Uh, the player is able to replace existing sails without having to demolish them first on legacy ships. Okay, so you can replace in place. You just plonk a sail over top. Okay. Uh, level up text lasts only 30 seconds before fading. I love that one. I actually turn off um announcements on my in the the settings so that i don't have to look up at the level up text uh, for it to fade away sounds fantastic uh lowering the number of wild creature spawns by 25 percent really interesting uh, resources required to progress through the stages of the great temple have been adjusted underwater black rocks can now be built on wow there's a couple of interesting ones there right so i, I paused on that one before less wild creature spawns so there's going to be less wild creatures wandering around uh and then there's some kind of a black rock underwater that you can now build on i'm going to be interested to see what that actually is is that meaning that you can build down deep in the depths hide things underwater because i know people already do that is there some specific rock that you can now do it on uh the effectiveness of sails on multiple modular ships have been adjusted effectiveness of sails on modular ships interesting we'll have to have a look at that one white sails are now more effective on the turtle and tramp freighter uh, loot from the kraken has been adjusted to drop higher tier quality items and blueprints mech monkey has now a slightly higher drop rate the names of wood resources have been changed to their original names oh and there it is so from earlier where we talked about the strong wood soft wood versus fur and poplar etc 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 we are back to the original wood names which, um, yeah, I don't mind either way. It'd be interesting to, to relearn uh, what's what there, at the very least. 
Uh, the cog now starts with one medium handling sail and has two sail points, which pretty much brings us to the end of the patch. Um, quite a lot going in there, specifically around fixes, and prior to the door. Well, just after these patch notes were put into the Discord, uh, I spent a couple of hours um, when Redbeard hopped on just having a chat with people. Uh, it was more of a conversation about PvP and how we potentially could come up with ideas for fixing um, Puckle Spam and uh, the pillar and foundation spam that you see across the islands. And it's very much a strategy that's used in PvP, but the Puckles specifically and the legacy ships uh, cause significant amount of troubles for the servers and so Redbeard's basically looking for ideas of how to fix it and some of the things we were throwing around was rather than requiring tons and tons of puckles to defend your island you have uh, a single tower that provides the same offensive capability and um, durability as all of those foundation and all of those puckles that you put down you have a no build radius around that tower but then, yeah, it has the same offensive and defensive capabilities of all the things that you've just replaced as a result. And so instead of having a hundred items sitting on the ground, you have one item that provides the exact same functionality. There are still a lot more complexities to it in that, you know, people do use some of the buildings for funneling people into channels for bottlenecks and things like that so that they actually can control the flow of PvP on their islands. And people also use things uh, on the islands as... Um, warning system so if something's destroyed then there's a notification to say that somebody's fighting in a specific spot and they know where to go and how to react and so there's a lot of different things that are in play but um, it was a very constructive conversation and there was a lot of information that Redbeard gave out uh, about what he wants it was kind of like a mini Q&A it's really good to um, actually get involved in it if you're ever on and you see Redbeard there make sure you ask questions to uh, clarify whatever it is that you might want to know uh, and one of the ones that I got out of it was the modular ships. And I knew that there's customizations for the modular ships coming up. And he basically said that we're looking at a month or so, and they'll start basically providing us with more uh, changes to the modular ships. And so we'll actually be looking at the customization side. So hopefully we'll walk, start moving away from that boxy look that we've got. They're going to rejig it. They're actually saying that, you know, they've put in what they have. They know that it's not great. Um, in fact, they know that it's not at all. But you know, there's going to be an opportunity coming up soon now that they're starting to fix all these server issues and connectivity issues uh, they'll be able to start going back to look at, you know, at the content that they really wanted to actually work on and the other part that he was talking about was xbox specific stuff and he himself actually went out and bought an xbox s which is the worst performing one on the system and they've been utilizing that xbox s to help provide them with the, what they need to know because they've actually got all the new details from Microsoft in terms of the APIs and stuff like that. They've actually got their Xbox S and they've actually been discovering some of the really significant problems and they basically said that every single patch going forward from here, uh, while it may not actually be in the patch notes, uh, they're going to be fixes in every single patch going forward that will relate to the Xbox. So, yeah, very interesting conversations going on at the moment. And obviously a lot of focus on fixes rather than new content, which has actually been fantastic to see. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments. Otherwise, make sure that you go ahead and like, comment and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.